Wednesday, February 20th, 2018 at 6 p.m. We're going to first call the meeting of the Rockingham Board of Liquor Commissioners to order. We have two applications, Halliday's Greenhouse and Flores LLC, DBA Halliday's Greenhouse and Flores LLC, for second class. Athens Pizza House, Inc., DBA Athens Pizza House, Inc., for first class. Madam Chairwoman, I move we approve the um, liquor permits for Halliday's Greenhouse and Flores, LLC, doing businesses. Halliday's Greenhouse and Flores, second class license. Athens Pizza House, Inc., doing business as Athens Pizza House, Inc., first class license. All set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'd like to call a meeting of the Rockingham Select Board regular meeting to order, 602. And before we go any further, I would like to first um, have a moment of silence for Mike Hardy, who, as we know, passed away um, a week ago. Um, we had, I don't think I've seen more people out at any service as we did on Saturday and, and Friday night. Um, he is a huge part of this community and his absence will be, be felt and I wanted to um, send my best wishes to Wendy and the family. So a moment of silence for Mike. <coughs> Okay, are there any additions? No. Just as a note, did I hear Athens Pizza House being given their license approval? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> um, are there any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting? Approved minutes of February 6, 2018. So moved. There's a second. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Three minutes per person. Deb. Two quick things. Number one, um, although I understand that because of loss of money losses, the classic Wednesday movies went to two, the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. They are being advertised and shown everywhere of the month. And so I was wondering why that changed, especially since there is still a concern about raising money or making sufficient funds to cover the classic film. That was one um, to th consider. And number two, and I know the, the, um, that that was something that you guys will address as far as budgets go. And number two, um, over the weekend um, and, and the last week, um, I'm, assert, I'm assuming that this is like we're going to mention it, the, um, the crosswalk signs have been constantly moved off of the sidewalk, off of the crosswalks and onto the side roads. Um, they are taking, they're taking some tearing and they continue to be left over. We have watched as police officers, that's up to the village, have driven by without moving them back into the spot and moving up their job. Um, but they are not being left in the street crosswalk as they're intent, they intended. I understand the awkwardness of it, but. It was a measure that we were all considering, and I understand most of this is village, but it's something to consider um, as a means to keep people from going to get the roads. I can tell you they were moved yeah. at 3 a.m. during the storm the other morning and following the plowing winter maintenance, they were put back. They got moved after that. I know nothing of it. I've, I know I've, they've been hit, but. I've personally put some back mm -hmm. a couple of times myself. <laughs> you know, some vehicles hit them. Some vehicles aim for them. Uh, well, specifically yesterday, I found all five of them moved tight to the curb, yep. one side or the other, and I placed them back up. Yeah, that's new since the storm then. I know the barrel up on Rock and Ann Street's been a target for vandalism that we finally removed it today because it just wasn't safe. Not that it has anything to do with the crosswalks, but it's near the crosswalk. Okay. Anything else? Maybe we should have a back stock of those things. They're expensive. They are. Oh, they are? Almost $300 a set. Well, still, that's a lawsuit. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, anything else? Manager's report. Uh, we had a town highway plow driver uh, involved in an accident while plowing on Sunday morning early um, uh, on Rockingham Hill Road with an injury. Um, the driver uh, was hospitalized but has since been released, I think this morning, uh, yesterday? Yes. Yesterday. And uh, he'll be okay. Um, the, the 2015 uh, vehicle is in rough shape but appears to be repairable. Any updates on that, Mike? No. 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 Uh, it's over to uh, Patriot Motors now, uh, but what happened is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, is that the plow basically dug into a, a divot in the road and uh, the vehicle went up over the plow and plow and uh, frame and all was looked underneath it. And he's got some photos on his cell phone, but it was, uh, uh, he's lucky to be alive. Yeah, there was a spring in the road and it thawed on, a, on an incline downhill and uh, he was going about 15, 20 miles an hour plowing along. We had a couple inches of snow on top of a couple inches of ice. All the dirt roads are ice packed and uh, got 70,000 pounds pushing it downhill. It's almost impossible to stop on a dime. You <coughs> snow. Plow dug into that spring across the road and the way the truck pushed it right up over the top of it. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Um, but again, uh, the driver's in, he's okay. Um, broken jaw, missing teeth. Um, but uh, could have been could have been a lot worse. Uh, our insurance carriers have been contacted, and, and claims entered for both workers' comp and uh, the collision. Uh, town reports are out. Um, town report. Uh, and dedicated to our uh, intrepid highway department plow drivers and my kind. So the, the inside cover uh, shows a dedication to, uh, to the highway department, each and every one. Uh, Susan and I today uh, uh, went down to the uh, uh, Blake Street garage and, and presented each of them with their own uh, uh, autographed version of it, if you will, and uh, they seem to be quite pleased with that and uh, surprised as well. So that was, that was very, very pleasant surprise. Thank you on behalf yeah. of the highway department. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, really appreciate appreciate it. It. Thank you for all your work. Thank yeah. you. Um, and all of our town employees work hard. We've got a good, you get good uh, dedicated bunch of guys. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's di di distributed throughout the town. Uh, senior Center, Lee Size, Market and Delhi, Chamber, People's United Bank, Fire Station, uh, uh, yeah, the police station, health center, the library, shell station, uh, Saxons River Mar Market, and the superintendent's office all have them. Uh, and we'll have it up online tomorrow. Are there any in Bartonsville? They used to be left at the clinic, that clinic. I, uh, I, I have a list here that was prepared, and I don't see that. <clears throat> in a while. Yeah. Okay. Out to the Grange. The vet clinic. Vet clinic. Oh, the clinic, that's right. No, I don't recall having doing that in quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Uh, much of the ski tow work is done at this point, um, and it is uh, open uh, for daytime skiing. Unfortunately, there was some lighting that still needs to be repaired, but uh, with the weather, I'm not sure of how much uh, availability there will be, but it is open and inspected. Uh, it is working now. <coughs> uh, this Thursday at the Opera House is a forum on opiates called The Importance of Hope, Steps to Help the Community Break the Cycle of Addictions from 6 to 8. Um, uh, this this Thursday, um, it's a forum intended to energize the community to take action to deal with the opiate is, uh, issue that that not only this community but many many other communities throughout the country are, are facing. Uh, Vilas Bridge meeting update last Friday, um, both uh, Susan and uh, Deb Wright and myself uh, and Gary Fox attended a meeting at the uh, Walpole. Uh, town Hall included representatives from the Winter Regional Commission as well as the Southwest Regional Commission and Keene. And we had a good discussion for, and also a planning commissioner and from, uh, uh, from Walpole. And it was a, a good discussion and I think that the, uh, they're looking into seeing to get about funding to do an economic development study. And that was one of the pieces, but there's also a lot of discussion about funding of a, of a new bridge. And I don't know if you want to add anything, but the funding, you know, at, at best, we're 10 years down the line for New Hampshire to come through. And in their 10-year plan, they only include one half of the, the cost. So they're uh, banking on the state of Vermont uh, chipping in half. So. And it was six and a half million or something was 
the report was the estimate, but yeah, both the overall of us cost that was, was six little, plus million, but, but several years low. back it was nine million. Yeah, so yeah. it seemed low. I don't know, I'm Deb. I don't know if you had anything to add to it, but it wasn't really encouraging. But it wasn't. You no. know, there's some effort on the on the part of, of Walpole to recognize the you know the shared economic development um, uh, impact that that bridge uh, has. Yeah, we came up with some ideas to help try and bring more um, light on the subject of our neighborhood actually being both Bellows Falls, Rockingham, and North Walpole and Walpole. I mean, that we all share, it's sort of a symbiotic relationship where we share resources between across the river. And I think that might help. And, and, and every little thing brings more light on the subject of how we all share. Um, and the Violet's Bridge has an impact, has impacted all of us as far as the travel back and forth. So people who live and work over, live over here and work over there and vice versa. So. And plus when they did the uh, arch bridge, it wasn't meant to hold as much traffic as it does right. because it already had, the, this is when the Vilas Bridge was open. So I was on that today and there are potholes starting to mm -hmm. come up, so. You know, the Southwest Regional Planning Commission rep uh, acknowledged that there's significantly more traffic on there. There's been traffic uh, counts, I guess, done. And you, you got, it's, it's obvious and now uh, empirical where they, they've got uh, traffic traffic counters having determined what the actual numbers are. Anyway, that, that's all I have for a manager's report. Can I ask a question? Did you have time to check on the curtains to fireproof them? Yes, we, we, uh, we, we did get a bid on, on all that. It was 13 some odd thousand. What, what we found that uh, uh, second look that it did not include is a lift. You know, they, they, need to, uh, they need to get elevated to get up to the top, and so Rick was working on getting pricing for that. So just you know, calling around for rentals. Uh, I was surprised to see that they didn't include that in their in their initial bid. Um, in speaking with um, uh, folks from Saxons River um, Arts, the, they're thinking that we might be able to get it done considerably cheaper if we actually did it on our own. So he's actually looking at it, uh, trying to find out what the chemical is, see if we can get some better pricing, and instead of spending thirteen up to fifteen thousand dollars. We can maybe get it for a third of that price. So we'll see what we can do. You know, when uh, I'm on the board of a homeless shelter in North Walpole, when we looked at, we were told we needed to have fireproof curtains, so we looked into doing that ourselves. Yeah. So they said we couldn't. It, ha it had to have a tag. It had to be done by somebody that was certified. Okay. So I'm not not sure you can do that, but I'd hate to delay getting this done because mm -hmm. it's so important. Yeah. I'm not even sure you can show movies legally if they're not done. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got a bid on it, and it's really, really high. And there's not that many people who do it, so I'm just we're just trying to find ways to uh, uh, shave the pricing down a bit. It's very, very steep. Um, there's basically one company that seems to be doing it, mm -hmm. which, is, which is Dark Star. Right. Yeah. Anything else? All right, moving along. Ratify and discuss vote taken on 2-6-2018 tax stabilization agreement between town and MDP properties. <coughs> we have people here to talk about that today. Uh, also, in your board packet of the two letters that were uh, that went to MDP from uh, under my signature. Madam Chair, members of the select board. Thank you. Town manager. This is a handout that goes with conversation. Uh, what you have in your hand labeled as number one, this is an actual copy of the tax stabilization agreement. And uh, I took the uh, liberty to highlight what <coughs> I consider to be uh, why we're here tonight. The, uh, on the first page, uh, it calls for the stabilization of uh, the real property for the period of five years. And then if you go to page, uh, the second page of that document, it establishes that the tax is based on a valuation of $2,300,000. And uh, that incidentally was the price when Vermed was sold, uh, the price in the transaction was Actually, two million two hundred ninety thousand. Sorry, Rick, I think that was it. So, that's two million three figure. 
Then uh, item number four, which uh, states that if uh, <coughs> that the town has the right to cancel the agreement if the current or similar commercial purposes are not maintained in that building. And the paragraph B under there says that, of course, that stabilization is transferable if the building is sold or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the critical thing in there is that if, I think, uh, and I think Shane would agree with this, that if uh, the use of the building did not occur for a 60-day period, that the town has the right to cancel the agreement. Okay? The, uh, what is labeled as number two, which I think is what Shane included in your packet, this was the letter that uh, advised that because uh, operations were ceasing that uh, the town was exercising a right to withdraw the agreement. Okay? Then item number three is the calculation of uh, what I would call kind of a clawback on what had been granted in terms of, of tax stabilization. And uh, we might come back to this because it says that the value was two million nine, which uh, was a uh, valuation prior to the transaction that established it at two million two ninety. Okay? Now the next item number four, and I think this is this is critical because uh, I think uh, this establishes a little different information than, than what you had. Actually, the folks at Graphic Controls who were in the building, that's the company that bought Vermed, uh, states that uh, they were actually producing uh, in that building until December 22nd. So I think uh, there may be a little bit of confusion because, uh, and Shane, I'm not sure where you got it, but it was... I think you had said that the uh, that production had ceased in September. That's what we understood. Yeah, and what happened in September, they began to move production out, but they continued. It was kind of a phase-out program mm -hmm. where they were progressively uh, shipping things. And uh, we checked with them again today, uh, and they said they have, uh, you know, the payroll records and bill of lading information to document that they were producing and shipping out of there until December 22nd. And I know personally they had people in there till the end of the year. In fact, they had people in there till the end of January, but the people in there in January were kind of cleaning things up uh, for the transfer of the building. So uh, if, uh, you know, from our perspective, we sold the building last Friday to Whitney Blake, who uh, just a, a little bit of information on that. Uh, I was before this board uh, several times. You, you folks and your predecessors were always very supportive to Vermit. In fact, when our management team bought the company, you helped to finance it. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> when, when uh, the, the buyer of the business decided to move the operation to Buffalo, uh, we felt bad about that. We felt terrible about it. In fact, I made the comment, for me, it's the worst day of my business career when I got that information. And I can assure you, we would have never sold the company to them if we didn't know they were going to move it. But that's their, you buy the company, you can do what you want to with it. Uh, but when we were in the process of marketing and, and uh, to sell the building, one of the things, and I have two of my partners here tonight, one of the things we talked about, we want to put somebody in there that's going to create jobs because also we had a lot of people that, that helped to build that company that lost their jobs when, when this moved. So uh, when Whitney Blake came forward, uh, they became uh, kind of our prime candidate to do that. We had uh, a couple other prospects, one of which I'm hopeful still uh, going to find a way to, for the town to move here. Uh, but the third prospect was... Uh, uh, was a self-storage operation, which uh, we kind of ranked a distant third because it didn't create any jobs. Two people would work there. Uh, so 
Whitney Blake, as you know, they're a manufacturer and they have already, they bought the building last Friday and are moving things in there to continue to manufacture. Uh, in fact, uh, and this should come from, uh, from those folks, not me, but I think their plan is to repatriate, in fact, the business that they had in Mexico up here, which will create a number of jobs. So uh, anyway, that's underway. So if, <coughs> if uh, uh, you accept uh, the comments here from graphic controls that they were producing until December 22nd, I think we're within the terms of the agreement because December 22nd till last Friday is less than 60 days and the building's going to be used for the same thing. Uh, and, and we can stop the discussion there because the next two pages I'm not real proud of because they came from an attorney uh, that was employed. He gets a little insulting in here. Uh, yep. Which. Uh, in these letters? Uh, no, not in those letters. In, in the ones that have uh, that, Five, that I six. gave to you. Oh. Uh, and th what he's questioning here, he's questioning the the appraised amount of the the established yeah. appraisal on the building and, and so forth. Uh, which uh, his contention was that. And again, I don't. I, I hope we don't have to get into this discussion. But his contention was that the building to say it was two million nine is is not valid because it was established three years ago, sold at $2,290,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, incidentally, we sold it uh, to Whitney Blake for $1.5 mm -hmm. So to say it's worth $2.9 million is, is, you know, a stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm hopeful that, uh, incidentally, and you also read in here, uh, it did uh, delay the transaction of the building. Uh, so it turned out it delayed it a week because we agreed to, uh, because the buyer was concerned that that uh, that this tax stabilization, they wouldn't be tax stabilized, and furthermore, that they might have to pay the tax, so we had to set aside the money to do that, but we finally came to agreement to do that. But he says in here it's jeopardizing the sale, uh, which uh, it delayed the sale, that's for sure, uh, but we found a way to, to kind of work around it. Uh, so. You know, my plea to you tonight is to is to withdraw your claim for the thirty-one thousand dollars. Otherwise, I can assure you, uh, we had a lease with Graphic Controls, which makes them ultimately responsible for taxes. Uh, they they're a litigious bunch. They'll fight this to you know forever. Uh, so. You know, I, I only mention that because it's it's a factor, uh, and that's why we got them involved with it. And you can see right away they had people on it say, "Yeah, we're within the terms of the agreement, and this is not a good thing." So I think what it gets back to, and I understand, uh, you know, Shane uh, heard that they're moving in September. I think what was missing by that they started to move in September, but it's a progressive thing where they're moving equipment over a period of time. And I know they've maintained operations in the building, just as they said here, December 22nd uh, was when they ceased production. So they were producing product and shipping it up till that point. Uh, and I think the good news, good news for the town is the building's going to be occupied by a manufacturer. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's a positive. And it's a company that's been around here for a good while. Why are they moving back from Mexico? Is it... Uh, I, I, again, you, you should ask Sheldon Scott that because uh, I only, you know, in conversation with him, uh, their business is expanding and they had rented space in Springfield, I know, and they had rented space uh, uh, in Claremont. So they're bringing those operations back to Bellows Falls. Uh, but he also said that uh, they had an operation where uh, they were, I think it's called drawing wire, that they had. Uh, in Mexico, and they plan to bring that operation back, repatriate that. So, uh, but again, Ann, I I shouldn't speak for him. You know, he's uh, but he he made that comment, and I you know he's been honest in his dealings, so I believe. No, him. I think he is too. I, I remember him, but I'm just wondering where he's going to find all these employees all of a sudden. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, you know when. Uh, when Graphic Controls moved uh, the business, they, what, we have 75 employees or something like that? Yeah, around 75 employees. Only two of them went to Buffalo. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So 73 people, you know, are, you know, either went to work somewhere else or, uh, and Anna Sam part about that, some of them were, were more senior. You know, we had three employees that were over 70 that, uh, that made good contributions to the business. They'll probably have trouble finding jobs. So there's some of that, but uh, I don't know. They feel confident they can, they can find people. Uh, so that's it. Any other questions? Any questions? We do have Steve Ancuda here Steve? who might be able to answer any questions on behalf of the board. One, one yeah. question I have is, is um, the original agreement was with MDP. Uh, does that automatically, uh, if they sold the property last week, does that nullify the, the agreement? Don't they still have an, an ongoing obligation to fulfill the other? The agreement? Well, I think the agreement is transferable. I mean, oh, was it trans? Yes, Steve. Uh, well, it actually that four point B says if either uh, the current MDP or its assigns ceases to do business for sixty consecutive days, so it it, it doesn't cancel the agreement. MDP could sign could have turned this over and have someone start up within the sixty day period and avoid any technical default under the agreement. I can tell you this, practically, and we did turn this agreement over to Whitney Blake, but Whitney Blake, you know, just said they bought the property for $1.5 million. <clears throat> I'd be surprised if they weren't already, you know, appealing the tax assessment on the property to bring it down to, from 2.3 to 1.5, or somewhere there about. So uh, the point being, Shane, I think that we transferred the agreement, but I don't know that it has any value to them, because... I, I think they'll appeal the, the, uh, the assessment. Maybe they won't. I don't know. That's again, I can't speak for them. But they certainly were a tax stabilization. It became an issue in the in the whole discussion of selling the property. So I just read the last page. <laughs> I think the listers are used to being called names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, we talked about that, and, and this Rich Bowen was our attorney at the closing. Yeah. And we weren't really familiar with him. Uh, he was recommended to us by uh, Sam and Nostrum because that was our attorney, but they were also Whitney Blake's attorney. Right. So uh, they said, use this guy, but uh, I didn't particularly like that language. That's yeah, that's, that's a little bit. Uh, <coughs> so we've got enough of that going on already you know, in our political world. Exactly. I guess okay, so we to ratify the vote. Well, we ratify the vote, or we we're sending it. Right? What's the process here? If we, I mean, <coughs> state I presume the board. Eric correct me if I'm wrong. The board could rescind its vote, or not ratify the vote. Right. But at the same, I mean, I, I mean, the the, the fact that it was two point nine million dollars that was never appealed. <coughs> You know, there, there is an agreement that still stands. The taxpayers of Rockingham paid the school taxes on that amount. You know, so if, if, the, um, you know, if the board decides not to uh, uh, impose, you know, exec execute what, what's uh, part of the agreement, then the voters of the, of the community will have uh, you know, paid this money and they didn't, didn't get their end of the bargain fulfilled. But at this point, it, they hadn't gone more than the 60 days. Well, I think the 60 days actually run. If it's December 22nd, I think that runs today or tomorrow. Just so for my benefit, I understand what has happened here. We were initially told that all operations had ceased in September, to the best of our knowledge. And now we're told that they didn't after the party received the bill. Is that the essence of it? Once, once we made it known that we wanted to collect on the agreement, then the other party said, well, no, wait, actually, we were still operating. Is that the case? Well, I don't think they, I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think they ever said they didn't operate September 15th. I don't know where that, that I don't know where that came from. Uh, well, I'll tell you where it came from. I got a friend to call on, a Friday morning saying or Thursday morning saying the project had to close 
and that we we had the town had to come up with a um, you know a letter related to this is in speaking with Steve and Kuda that the town had to have some kind of letter indicating uh, its stance and then actually when we went to the board that that very day excuse me it wasn't Friday it was uh, at the board meeting <coughs> but, I, but I think uh, the, the question was where the information that was closing in September came from mm -hmm. and I think that's where Mr. Kolich, if I pronounced it correctly, Kolich, report, reported to this board uh, in, in last September that the plant was going to be closing, the, or this tenant was moving out, was closing down. In September, that's what we were talking well, about a lot of time and, ago. And then. probably where that came from, uh, we we were required, they were required to advise us uh, six months if they weren't going to renew the lease. Mm -hmm. And the lease actually went through, let's say, January. So. They advised us they were going to begin moving things out. They were not going to renew the lease. Uh, but again, the September date, the only time I ever heard the September date, and maybe I was a source of it, was they are going to begin moving things out in September. Not that they weren't, they ceased. And they still had pay, people on the payroll uh, all the way through, actually, December 30th. And uh, so, I mean, they, they were still in the building producing. They didn't move everything out on a weekend. There's a lot of equipment in there and so forth. Um, so the board should understand that under the agreement that it that if it see, the property ceases to be used for 60 days, whether it's by MDP or it's assigned, then the agreement is void. Uh, I don't know if the new owners in their operate getting set up tonight, but if they don't start manufacturing by February 22nd or so, uh, the, void, the, the agreement's void in a couple days. If we use this. I think it's void tomorrow. The this <coughs> December 22nd day. So there's a lot of stake here over, you know, did they seize manufacturing or not, right? So will the company not come here if we don't agree to ratify this agreement? No, Whitney Wait, Lynn's not. They both well, it says ratify or rescind. You said <coughs> Well, What's at stake here? The property is closed. My understanding is that amount of money may have been put in escrow uh, as part of the, the closing. I don't know for sure. But what's at stake is that there's $30, $31,000 either that is owed to the town or or kept by the um, former owner. Now let me help you a little bit with that. Yeah. For 2000, April 1st, 2017, remember we set the tax rate based upon the grand list on April 1st of each year. Right. April 1st of 2017, because of the town-wide reappraisal, the value of the building on the grand list was brought down to 2.3. Mm -hmm. So the stabilization really didn't mean anything as far as the taxes for the past year. So we're really only talking about those first two years. And going forward, uh, the new owner can appeal to try to get it dropped down from 2.3 to something lower than that. But the board's surely familiar with real estate. We have thinking of a dam, uh, real estate appraisals, and that often a transaction doesn't dictate the value for the grand list depending on the, the situation of the parties. It can be higher or lower. Uh, so the issue for this board is if you rescind the vote to terminate the agreement today, if the property's not used within the next couple of days for manufacturing, then all of a sudden it's, it, we're in violation again. It, that's if you accept the December 22nd date. But the violation would be with the new owners, not the former owners. It would be that property, regardless of who owns it. The, the contract is with MDP or its assigns, whoever owns that property. You know, real estate attaches to the issues attached to the real estate, they don't attach to the person. Or the, or the entity that owns it. So, so the value of that property, we've got a stabilization agreement that dropped, for tax purposes, the value for town and school taxes to 2.3 for 15 and 16, and the agreement says that if they cease for 60 days, whoever owns it, it then that gets paid back during the five-year period. So the new owners would be saddled with that uh, termination of this agreement if you rescind your vote. So if that was to take place and they did not begin production within the remainder of the time, <clears throat> how do we know? Who actually says, oh, no, we were producing, we're okay. 
How do we know? Payroll timesheets? Carl, I would say the bigger question, uh, frankly. Uh, I think you want to be supportive of the companies in this town. I don't think you want to say to Whitney Blake, look, you didn't, you're not meeting this, so you know, we're going to sock you with the bill here. Well, I agree, I mean, but... Uh, this is a company that's been here forever. I understand, but we're also looking at an amount of over $30,000, right? But it's a clawback. It's not like it's, you know, I, yes, you know, someone someone paid for it. Arguably, and this is, this is another debate, that if you decide to do this, I can guarantee it will occur, is this thing is titled tax stabilization. It's not tax reduction and stabilization. And some would make the case that the property was valued at 2.3 million in this agreement, which it is. Now to go back and say it's worth 2.9 million, uh, you know, it was it was sold and valued at 2 million 290. There's also two bank appraisals that put it at 2.2 or 2.0 million, and now it's just been sold at 1.5 million. And let me tell you, I. I was involved. This property was marketed all over New England. This brochure, uh, which I think some of you have seen, this brochure was sent to every attorney's office, accountant's office, development person's office, realtor's office, insurance persons, uh, the top 100 manufacturers in the state of Vermont. It was put on a website where it's exposed to one to two million people. Uh, it was uh, the same th brochure was sent throughout New England to people. It was exposed to everybody. A thousand of these went out, okay? And the property sold at 1.5 million. Now you can make a case and say, okay, maybe it's worth more than that. I certainly think it's worth more than that, but guess what? That's what a knowledgeable buyer and a knowledgeable seller sold. And I can tell you, it was sold as a manufacturing facility. That's why I wanted to sell it. Now, to sit here and get penalized. Uh, so well, we, we, should ex we should accept the loss because they can't, is what you're saying. Well, I mean, we also well, have a situation here, I think, that, I mean, it's a time thing. I mean, it really, if, if it had sold a few weeks earlier, perhaps they wouldn't have Whitney and Blake wouldn't be in this situation that we're putting them in, that they haven't started producing yet, right? <clears throat> or I mean, a couple weeks later. Or a couple weeks later. I mean, I mean, they were aware, sorry. Go ahead. They were aware of this agreement when they purchased it, knowing that they had sure. to start manufacturing I, I, by tomorrow? I mean, I don't know, I can't speak for them, but I can almost guarantee you that if pressed, they'll say, yeah, we were manufacturing, or they'll manufacture something in here tomorrow. I mean, it's, uh, but, uh, I don't think you want to get that litigious about it. It's the spirit of the thing, I think. Uh, and I made the comment. I've, I've been in this town for 25 years, one company or another. This board has always been supportive of the manufacturer. I said that to every prospect I talked to. Uh, there's another prospect looking at property here, and I, yeah. and I made that same comment to them. You're not going to find a more supportive town than than Bellows Falls in terms of trying to bring business and industry into the I think it, I think it's great that uh, Whitney Blake has stepped up to the plate, made a reinvestment in the community. I think it's great they're bringing jobs back to Bellows Falls. Um, and I was aware of, of the Claremont and had been to Springfield. And when I saw that sign up there last year, I thought, you know, why aren't they here in Rockingham more? And do why are they doing something in Springfield? So I like the idea of them coming back. And I think the board, you know, if uh, if we can work this out, we're uh, amenable to, to all the parties involved, specifically Whitney Blake and the town of Rockingham and the select board. I think that'd be in the best interest, especially if they're going to bring jobs back here, especially back here from Mexico. I'd yes. be happy to meet in executive session with you. I think there's been a sufficient enough threat of litigation that we can talk in private among the board without these folks leaving the building. You want to talk about it? It's up to you. Why would you need to do that? Yeah. What's the point? This is a public meeting. We're talking about a public matter at thirty thousand. You're going to take it away from them or give them a break. Who are you going to make it up on? 
Well, it's already been made up. I mean, the these taxes have already been, we've already paid for it's, this out of the taxpayers, the taxpayers have already, already paid, paid for this. Paid the bill. And if they were still manufacturing, as if they hadn't moved to Buffalo, they would be, we would still be making up that difference. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have the situation where the people who bought the, that company left. They fought to get an, a tenant uh, in there for the doing? last several months. Wait a mean. second. And I mean, it is, I mean, we don't want to set a precedent for this to happen all the time with tax stabilization, but I think, I, in my view, this is a, a unique situation in that. Um, I mean, what we've all been arguing to get manufacturers back here in however many months. We, they found out in September they're leaving, and now here it is February. They've got a manufacturer in there. And, I mean, I do worry about setting a precedent, but I also don't, I think we do <coughs> have to consider that we, sure. I mean, they're going to be keeping people here who don't have to move out and not pay taxes on their homes. So, I mean, there's I, a lot I'm, of things in play here. I'm thinking that our attorney may be alluding to something that he probably ought to make us aware of. So there's some knowledge there that if prematurely in a public portion of the meeting could place the town of Rockingham at a substantial disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage the board to enter into an executive session with its attorney for this information. Um, I don't like taking the $31,000 hit, so to speak, and I want, so to speak, call it that. Um, what I would say is that this is something that I think um, we have to hear the information from the attorney on in confidence, and um, I'd rec recommend that we go into an executive session if we can iron this out. Thirty-one thousand to me is nothing. Right. When it when, when it brings jobs and it, when it brings. I, and I agree with you. I mean, we can we can eat up twenty-five thousand in legal fees in a matter of uh, three yeah, months. And we do. And we do. <coughs> and um, you know, I think um, you know it's, it'd be pertinent to hear the attorney, but also to keep an open mind from the information that he may have or may not have, and uh, we can better make a decision in a public session. And do we invite these three gentlemen in? Uh, it's no, on the okay, recommendation of the attorney, no. Joe? So, first of all, there's no guarantee any of the jobs are going to be for people living here. All right. And second of all, this is exactly the kind of thing people are mad about. You go behind closed doors to cut a deal with business. Nobody's cutting a deal. That's that. nobody's cutting a deal. And that's essentially what it is. No, it's not. Make that's a decision, an open meeting. Th that is not what If you is. want to decide it, decide an open okay. meeting right here that's and now. Enough. That's enough. Thank you. Yes. I'm just going to say the board can only make a decision in public, in a public, right. public meeting. That they can deliberate on it. Deliberate and close Damn. doors. Yeah. I would simply like to say that I don't believe it's necessarily Whitney Blake would be paying that because it, he did mention that there was money set aside because it is it, the owner should not be on the new business that is taking over taking this over. It wasn't their fault that the amount of days was sixty and here they are. They just completed the transaction. Um, so perhaps sure. the money could be still taken because it's like it's highly likely that Whitney Blake will come and ask for a tax reduction down to one point five million dollars. Um, which will reduce the grand list. So, my, I'm just saying, whatever you decide to do with the attorney, executive session or no, and I'm um, having to come out and make a decision, consider that the $30,000 or $31,000 may be paid by right. someone, but it will not be Whitney Blake. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's my understanding at the moment, although not clear, that there may be some monies in escrow. There may be rights for us to that, to those monies. And without conferring with our attorney, I'm not sure what our rights are at the moment. Does anybody else? For what? What our rights are to escrow funds or anything? Okay. I don't. I don't know. That's why we have attorneys. Okay. So does the board agree to go into an executive session to speak with? Well, since this was unexpected, do we have the language? I'll make the motion. I'll do it best as I can out oh. of verbatim. So. Take it. This is going to be in reference to real estate, or pending potential litigation. Potential litigation. Or conference with with the attorney. With the uh, attorney. I move that the Rockingham Select Board enter into an executive session to discuss potential litigation, and that may place the municipality at a substantial disadvantage. And to invite into that executive session the Select Board in its entirety with its attorney and the municipal manager. And is there a statute on Sister Cole here? She can fill it in. 
uh, for providing VSA professional legal services, one VSA 313, A and one, or? Is there a second? Second. Is okay. there a discussion? discussion? I would just like to know what the disadvantage is. You're going to executive session because it would put the municipality at a disadvantage. What is that disadvantage? That's why we don't know until we talk to yeah, our That's why it's client company. We're talk about legal strategy. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, well, whatever. You got to go behind closed doors. I think we're trying to deal yeah. with the business, and you're going to put it all back on the property owners, the rest of us in town. Period. Nope. That's what it boils. That's not what we're trying. No. To. We're trying to find out what to do. Yeah, and you come out, and you get what rubber stamp it, right? Rubber stamp. It's good for you. I don't know if you have oh, I was just going to answer this question. But. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Do we have to do the second one? We don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. It yeah, I don't interpret it that way, but. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll try to be quick. Thanks. 7 11, I guess. Madam Chairwoman, in reference to the agenda item, we'll ratify and discuss the vote taken on 2 6 2018, reference tax stabilization agreement between the town and MDP properties. I want to make the following motion. Noting that today is 60 days from the December 22nd, 2017 day on which the company claims operations ceased operation, I move that the board ratify its decision from the February 6, 2018 to nullify and void that the to nullify and void the tax stabilization agreement between the town and MDP properties LLC. For a second. second. Any discussion? Deb. Can you explain what that means? Are you going to expect the thirty one thousand dollars in taxes or are you going to give it away? That we're going to expect the thirty one thousand. You're going to expect it. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you for erring on the side of the taxpayer. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'll supply the clerk with a copy of my motion so we have it for later. Okay. All right. On. Thank you. There's no Chuck Weiss here. You still have a letter of resignation? Hmm? We have a, uh, accept the letter of resignation from Planning Commission and Wyndham Regional Commission. This was the letter from Alan Lacombe, who yes. for he served on this. For several years, I would say. I don't even know how many. Mm -hmm. A lot of years. A lot of years, yeah. and he's yeah. done a great job representing the town and yeah. both matters. Yes. Well, um, I'm assuming that. Twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. That um, since there's only two more weeks before the next election, we will wait until uh, putting someone to Wyndham Regional Commission until we make our appointments in March. Which be March 20th. March 20th, I think. Do they put in a letter of? But people interest? can put in a letter of interest for the Wyndham Regional Commission position, and I think Alan and Chuck were both going to recommend people. Mm -hmm. So, we need a vote to accept the well, letter of resignation. Yes. yes. There is an ad in the paper already asking for people who are interested in the Planning Commission, and the Wyndham Regional position has already been um, given to the board selected. Um, to appoint Randy Bondle to the Wyndham Regional. Isn't that a select board decision? Yes, they're going to bring it to you. They're going to bring it to you. That's my understanding. Because she wanted to be appointed. So we talked about it at the board meeting. I'm assuming they brought it to you. No, no we haven't, I haven't seen heard oh, that anything from Randy last month. A month um, ago? And I did see an ad in the paper about the yeah, people for, who are interested. Yeah, yeah. And it, there's. Yeah, we are interested in having people who are interested, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I mean, there's two. At this point, there's, I mean, there's a meeting next Thursday. That would be the first meeting of the of the full commission for the Wyndham Regional Commission. Oh yeah. I mean, sorry, next Tuesday. Um, I mean, it, we could appoint someone tonight, but we don't have a, a lot of people. Done it. Yeah. And we also reappoint in March after right. town meeting, so we could just. You could appoint that. someone temporarily. You know, well, what March. committee did Alan? Serve on. He was on executive executive board. committee. No, but what? But I don't know what other committees he served on in the Wyndham Regional. So, we, so we don't have enough information. Yeah. And that was that. Um, 
I mean, I don't think there's a hurry. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's a hurry to appoint mm -hmm. someone right mm -hmm. now. Because there's only one meeting that the commission is going to have between now and... Um, and usually when you're a new commissioner, when I, I was first new commissioner, I, didn't, I had to have an orientation, and I didn't start going to the meetings until, uh, or the committee meetings until April. Um, uh, so. so I would recommend anyone who's interested, if they're open meetings, they can show up at the meeting next Tuesday, which is at New Fane at the um, fire station in New Fane. Mm -hmm. Anyone is interested in being a part of the commission, they can show up for that meeting and then see if it's something they want to yep. be involved in. It's not a bad idea. Um, otherwise, people can submit their name mm -hmm. and we can make a decision if the board agrees when we make all the other appointments. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, do we need a vote to accept his resignation? Or we just accept it? I think we just accept it. Okay. With regret. With regret. With regret. And thank you very much for your service. Okay, Bellas Falls Opera House. Discuss reclassification from Enterprise Fund to Special Revenue Fund. Yeah, but um, you'll recall that um, when we met with the auditor uh, in a joint board meeting um, last month, I think it was, in, in, yeah, January 30th, they recommendation on the town's side was to reclassify the theater fund from enterprise fund to a special revenue fund. Uh, I guess you noted, I'm just reading for the minutes, noting that the enterprise fund should be self-sufficient and the theater fund is has never been that way. Um, and, uh, you know, again, the, one of the differences between a special revenue fund is uh, Again, that enterprise fund is, is fee-based, and this is not really fee-based. What we have is you know, uh, tickets, and it's just a, a different kind of animal. But again, it's supposed to be able to be self-sustaining, and this is just not. Um, so I would recommend the board move to reclassify the theater fund from an enterprise fund to a special revenue fund, effective July 1, 2018. So moved. Seconded. I could reword it all over again. Any yeah. discussion? Joe? What's the goal? To do this, what are you hoping to accomplish by switching? Uh, no one will see any difference. It's, it's an audit. It's a recommendation from our auditor. Uh, in uh, uh, from an auditing standpoint, there are different types of different types of municipal funds, and the enterprise fund is like the water department, the uh, sewer department. Those in, in the village, those are fee based, depends upon usage, and it's a different animal when it comes. And, and it, it's self-sustaining. It, those don't operate on a loss. You raise your rates. Uh, with the theater fund, um, it, it, it it's just operates a, at a loss because you just can't. Get yeah, you can you, you can raise the rates, but then no one's going to come. I mean, uh, so it, it's yeah. no one's going to see any any difference. It's just an auditing accounting issue. But yeah. I mean, it does make it does make it a lot more clear, I think, in when you're seeing those losses. It's it's. I mean, right now you you have to look. Deep in the numbers, and but it, but, but it doesn't. It won't show depreciation. Um, right. Well, I mean, so that always often shows a loss through depreciation. So. Right. I thought it did in the audit. It was well, there's depreciation in in the audit. Yeah. The audit. It's the only place where depreciation shows up, isn't it? The theater. Enterprise funds. In the enterprise funds. Right. Um, but we have been subsidizing it about forty thousand a year. Mm -hmm money coming in from the general fund to cover those losses and this just sort of I think makes it a little bit more clear right, but it, it, we uh, well last year we were budgeted for a $40,000 loss to a $9,000 um, uh, to the I don't, no, I don't think what's that I mean I think if you look at money in and money out there's a loss every year Yep. Every year, mm -hmm. and, that and it, this is very yeah. clear. I mean, if if and that's something we'll go in the next discussion about the theater committee is figuring out. Okay, how do we turn that around, um, or do we just accept it and say, okay, this is the way we subsidize. You know, we subsidize it so that we have something for the kids to do, right. and you know, it's entertainment for the town, and that's a value like the recreation center is a value. I mean, it just puts it into a different um, ability to talk about it. I think. All right, so we need to, did we make the motion? I forgot. So we did. Yes. I, All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, appoint Opera House Advisory Committee. 
Wow, there's some interest here. We have eight people who have put in letters of interest. Um, Jan She, Sandy Martin, Charlie Hunter, Shell Sauer, Martha Rowley, Gray Masuko, uh, Thomas Thomasina Coates, yeah, yeah, and Deborah. Um, so we, I don't even know. We, Carrie went back to see when the last time the theater committee got together, and it was probably during renovation or shortly thereafter. No, 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 no. It, was, it was probably about 2013. Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, it was more sooner than sooner than. Okay, 2013. Okay. Um, and Charlie, I know you had some great s suggestions that you sent an email to me about kind of what the theater committee could do. That, that would be good you if you could do that. Otherwise, I could find it on my phone. But yeah, you could. Um, I suggest the select board charge the BFOH committee with the blanket task of looking into current revenues, expenses, and policies involving the BFOH. The committee would work with the town staff to compile information and understand the issues facing BFOH operations. The committee would issue select board recommendations about current policy and future direction of the BFOH. It would then be up to the select board to choose to adopt those recommendations or not. Questions of fair investigation. Uh, do you want those two? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, where does current BFOH audience for films and for live events come from? How are BFOH expenses and revenue compiled and allocated? What is the best way to determine the BFOH's efficiency? How do we exploit the potential for the BFOH as a larger economic driver for the town? What is the optimal programming mix for the BFOH? How should the BFOH best partner with programming entities as we look toward the future? What are various revenue streams the BFOH can capture and expand upon? Is there a written mission statement for the BFOH and for the BFOH staff? If so, does it need updating? If not, the committee should create one for select board ratification. The committee should review and offer select board updated current policies and rental agreement documents. I, I would think the committee would be ongoing members serving maybe one year terms with appointments starting uh, whenever, um, <clears throat> extended to whenever the usual reappointment of committees is in 2019. I think a reasonable timeline would be that the committee should aim to compile information during the spring, discuss and synthesize information during the summer and fall, and issue an initial report by the end of 2018. Um, and I said I'd be happy to serve as chair or co-chair, and I've talked with Jan Sheehy. Um, I'm gone so much of the time, I just think it might be good to have her as uh, vice chair or co-chair. Um, and I would also emphasize that the BFOH committee uh, would not be involved in actual event booking. I feel very strongly that that's not something the town. Uh, I don't. I don't want. A few years ago, we had a theater operations person who booked events to disastrous uh, uh, result. Anyway, so that, that's my that's my thought. So is this a this is a select board appointed committee? Right. So we get to have minutes and have until minutes. we jam, take minutes. Somebody there will be appointed to take minutes. Yeah, and they have to get them to carry within five days. So that's in the, it seems like the legislator is changing it to five business days. That's a bill that's in, which that would be better than yeah. five days. Mm -hmm. but, um, people on the committee. Well, it, it was just five, I mean, it, well, I would take recommendations from others, but five to seven, I mean, any more than seven seems unwieldy. But then again, there's eight if now. There's, the problem well, is you have to have a quorum. So, well, one thing I would like, the only reason I, I have any hesitancy about Ray is that Ray is sort of actively involved in presenting events. And I, I would, I mean, I love Ray and I happily work with Ray all the time, but I just think for, uh, cleanliness, because uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of talking to all the entities that present things. Um, You're concerned with keeping things in their boxes. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I would just, I mean, I have presented uh, events, but I am no longer actively presenting events. I think at the same token, he could add information that others may not have on the, on the details of what 
Well, so can Charlie. What, what promoters are actually looking for. So can Shell, actually, can't she? Yeah. Um, well, I have no problem with this being eight people on the committee. Um, you know, I, I also, I could not be on the committee and just tell everybody what I think they ought to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah, should be there. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if it's, if it's a committee, you'd have to have the quorum. So if there's eight, you have to have five that show up to make an official. Yeah. And so getting five people all the time, five out of that eight to be there, yeah. is that, that difficult to ask for people? Yeah, why don't I not be on it? No. Hey, so <laughs> this is an advisory committee, right? To the theater, to Rick, or to the select board? To the select board. To the select board. So what about Rick in this? I'm not saying he well, should be there. That's why I was saying it's cleaner not to have people who have a vested interest on the direct committee. I mean, they certainly are going to be consulted and talked with, and that's why I was saying if you're looking to take someone off that list, I would suggest not having Ray on the actual committee. Or Rick. Or, or Rick didn't express any interest in being on the committee. Well, yeah, I don't think he would. By default, he, would, he, would, he, would, he should be on the. Committee. He could be as, he could be at meetings. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As they necessary. would be open meetings. Like staff, a staff meeting. Right, they would like be open member. meetings, so anyone could attend. Oh, right. they would have to be. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. I see the committee functioning a great deal like the revolving loan fund mm -hmm. committee. Yeah. yeah. Except we wouldn't be making recommendations about applicants. Applicants would come directly to the select board. People that wanted. People or businesses that wanted to use the no, that, house for any period of time. That goes to staff. Right, would go to staff. Uh, okay. yeah. okay. If somebody wants to use it, it goes to okay. Rick, and then I have to ultimately sign off okay. on it. But it would recommendations of, you know, do we increase the rates? Do we, right. you know, the board would set the policies, and policies. we would have to live right. with them. Um, you know, do we change the whatever would be advising us of that? Um, my only worry about, again, about eight is the quorum issue, because they mm -hmm. would have to have the quorum at five. So but his Charles recommendation is Ray not be on there, so let me just take him off. And, and so that would be seven. You'd still need four. Which is better than trying to get five on mm -hmm. yeah. What do people think about that? Well, I like the idea of a quorum, because you know how hard it is to get a quorum yeah. committees. Can, <coughs> can you give a copy of, of what you read from? Um, to me, and we could put together a, a charge, you know, from the board that they could you could all s sign at the next meeting or so. I mean, any any committee or board should have some s a charge right. and no. rules. You know, they would set their own rules though. And yeah. Rick was sitting on these. How does that affect his hours? Uh, he's now on salary. Okay. Did you say you have a mission statement yet, or are you, no. are you going to develop that the first meeting? I'm saying, is there one? The, is there, does it need, it, I don't know if there ever has been. A, you mean a mission statement for the committee or yeah. for the office? house? Committee. For the mission. For the, well, all, all I've written is what my thoughts are that the, mm -hmm. the committee they, they could come up looking to do. So sometimes it's good before a meeting to look at, you know, the mission statement to keep on track. Right, that's right. why I wrote a list yeah. of what I thought right. the committee might want to do. All right, so what does the board think? Have it at, leave it at seven and not have seven. I mean, just you have the I mean, nothing against Ray, but it's the, the principle that someone who is currently booking in the theater not be part of the mm -hmm. committee as a president. Yeah, seven. Seven. So, a motion to accept Jan, Sandy, Charlie, Shell, Martha, and Deb. So moved, Thomasina. Thomasina, Thomas 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 sorry, Thomas Thomas. sorry, Thomasina. Thomas I didn't mean to ignore you. Yeah. So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, do we also want to appoint a select board person, or we can do that in the next turn of events? How often election? do you plan to meet? The next meet? board, yeah. was that mentioned? Okay. Biannually? Oh, no. A lot this year, and then hopefully much right. less often. Okay, great. I would thank Charlie, some of the information you had when you were previously serving up here. I thought when I looked through it the other night was pretty beneficial. Cool. So we'll uh, hold off appointing any, a select board representative to the committee Oops. as a okay. um, until the next board is Deborah. in uh, place. Deborah. Deborah. 
Do you have a meeting date for the first one? No. No, I didn't know. It. Just now that now that now we've been charged with going to now. <laughs> well, and do you want to do people um, one year and you know three year terms like the one I think year. maybe the committee should come back to us with a recommendation about whether one year or um, or you know maybe some one some two just so that there's some um, yeah, consistency it's three well three year terms three year terms would, would be the norm yeah that's like planning board and things like that okay yeah. I can talk to you guys about that yep someone, someone can Sandy can. <laughs> All right, any further on that? All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for those who volunteered. Moving on. Just Mike. Just so oh. Shane, is it okay tomorrow if I send you, if I email you that text? Perfect. So. Yep, and we'll, we'll put something together and give notice to all the. If you have contact information, or maybe Carrie has it, we'll let them know about the appointment. Thank you. Okay, now, Mike. Sorry to keep you waiting. I know you have one. Welcome Fighting the flu, come on up. Or no, he has the flu. He stays there. <laughs> That's right. Stay there. <laughs> All right. VTrans certification of compliance for town roads and bridge standards and network inventory. So this is pretty much pretty much the standard. Yeah, it be complete. Yeah. I talked to Chuck briefly before I came in. I wanted to get a review of whether anybody to get a chance, but it sounds like it's all good. So you're happy with it? Okay. It's something we have to do to certify that we're right. compliance. Right. That way they'll, they can give us grants. Madam Chairwoman, if you're out, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and make a motion that the select boards accept uh, the certificate of compliance for town roads and bridge standards and network inventory. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Review and approve finance and maintenance agreement with the State of Vermont intersection of Missing Link Road and Herrick's Cove Road. This is part of the paving project, uh, Route 5 paving project that uh, finished up last year. Uh, part of the project included uh, realigning, uh, going from a, a, uh, an island intersection to a, a somewhat of a 90 degree intersection. And uh, part of that is uh, in, because it impacted uh, a class three town road, the state requires uh, agreements in, of this nature. Um, we went through a couple of iterations of it, and it's just one of those things that we are we are now responsible for the signs and maintenance of the class three portion. Mm -hmm. Originally, they wanted us to be responsible for the signs on the, the state highway, and I balked at that, and we, we worked that out of the agreement. So, so it's a standard agreement for um, for a project this uh, this time. Okay. Need a motion. And Mike, you're happy with Yep, that's typically how they do it. Okay. Okay, I'll they install, we uh, take care of future maintenance. Okay, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve the finance and maintenance agreement with the state of Vermont, referencing a section of Mr. Link Road and Eric's whole vote. Second. All in favor? Okay, Aye. who signs it? Who signs oh, wait, it? Yeah, and to wait. authorize the manager to, to execute? And to authorize the manager <laughs> to execute any and all documents related to the agreement. Agree with that? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm glad they're addressing this. That was a very confusing intersection. Yeah, they're doing away with the Y entrance going for more of a 90 for oh. safety reasons. Yeah. It's going to come flying in, flying out. you got to stop. you got to turn and stop. Yeah. Good. Okay. Crosswalk painting information. This is a show and tell. Fire away. <laughs> okay. Well, I have some concerns, Mike. Yep. Um, and having some previous construction experience, although many years ago, um, and we did line painting and stuff. Um, and we've talked here on this board about uh, doing different types of um, markings, or the 3M applicable markings, or markings bonded into hot pavement after. Um, I had some concerns, and some of those concerns were, uh, for, uh, which is highlighted this time of the year, if you're plowing, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, because you it's your job, um, your expertise, but you're down here at times where you're with a bucket loader or with a, I've seen a grader down here scraping. Uh, my experience is that we'd scrape some of that stuff up, and I just don't want to spend a bunch of money if that's going to be the case on before, that type of application. Before we get too far into that, I never got a response to my question. Yeah, that was my mistake. I, we have replied all. I assume the whole board would get it. I have it if you'd like to read it. And then, I guess my specific question as to <clears throat> if one box 
of this material, you get eight 24 inch by three foot pre-made strips. For that price, counting up the number of sidewalks that could soon be redone with the new asphalt project. I would like to compare that to what we what we pay three men twice a year to, to paint them and then they, they're not visible five weeks after we paint them. Part of this year's problem, it, and I'm making excuses, we had some issues with the paint. It, it, was, it was fading. I have some photos if you want to look at them. And uh, I contacted the uh, representative from Franklin Paint that we buy the paint from. I typically buy 10 to 12 buckets in the spring, 10 to 12 buckets in the fall, so it doesn't sit on the shelf and solidify, and it's no good because the stuff is expensive. And he, uh, he came and looked at, looked at it and said it obviously was a bad batch. So that's why some, that's not why all the crosswalks are faded, but that's why some of them are. And now was some of that paint used downtown? That I can't tell you that it was. I know it was used around the schools, and some of those are some of the areas that have faded rather quickly. So, but I don't, cost-wise, I still think that the paint is cheaper than the, the plastics in the in the thermal sheeting. Now is it is it correct? Even, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is it correct to assume that we could buy uh, seven of these boxes which would have the pre-made things for 223 dollars a box and i would like to compare that to how much it costs to pay three men to paint them twice a year if we got 10 years out of that and spent 2400 bucks how can we compare the price i don't know i would have to figure that out but i don't I don't believe you're going to get 10 years out of it. They told me that, that I'd get several years out of Atkinson Street. And it's it's coming. I've, I've noticed the ones on Atkinson Street, yeah. the ones where cast stands during yeah. the day yeah. are wearing more. In the wheel tracks. And I, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but where people are stopping on them. So the one by William Street yeah. is pretty well still <laughs> marked. And when was that put down? Two years ago. It's the second winter. You're talking off the Route 5 project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, these ones take... I mean, that's that's the intersection right there. That's probably the worst one, of course. It's well, without having the numbers, I can't really continue discussion yeah. because if it costs... I, if we spend 2300 bucks and get five years out of right. a visible marking strip yeah. and pay three men twice a year with 100 gallons at 15 mil... Yeah. I would like to know what the difference is. If it's, if it, in one year, we're paying that much for those men to do it. We're getting five years out of a, a better yeah. product. I didn't. Uh, I don't know what the man hour cost is. I'll have to get that for you. That was, yeah. Yeah. He, my printer's not good. Yeah. But he thought he sent. That I thought out. I sent it to all you. I apologize. Oh, I, I got. Oh, Did you okay. get that? I got it. But you then didn't I didn't get uh, my answers. Yeah. Those are the answers. Those are the answers in red. Oh, yeah. no, I didn't get that. You might want I, didn't, I didn't believe I saw it. But, uh, yeah, he, I sent it to Mike. I said, Mike, right. please handle this. Copy Kerry. He, he did a reply all that right. went to Kerry. And, and I Mike. thought it went to everybody. Okay. Didn't know. Yeah, so that's the problem. I just want to show on the, on the very last photo of... Uh, it's, it's up, it's it's up in front of the middle school. Yeah. This area right here. Thank yeah. you. Read them all. Okay, that pavement's a year older than Route <clears> 5. <throat> that's painted twice a year. Mm -hmm. I won't say it's the same um, uh, traffic volume as Atkins in the school, but that, I mean, that's holding, that's holding up well. That really is pretty good for this time of year. Where's that? That's right, uh, middle, right by the middle school. school. That pavement's a year older than Atkins Street. That's paint. That's no thermal or tape or nothing. That glass so beaded, too? It's glass beaded. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot more wear and friction and pressure on, an, on a, well, for school in Atkinson, a nine-way intersection, constantly stopping and turning yeah. across. I mean, There's a lot more wear. You know, we're living in New England. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's a bad product. Mm -hmm. You get the freeze and the thaw, so you get the expansion and contraction of the pavement, and the stuff's going to wear. I mean, I think the biggest thing downtown is the the pavement is so bad. One minute it's up here, the next minute it's down there, and it's just they got scraped right off. Want to show that? Yeah, this is uh, I'm, I'm still kind of interested in specifically like here. We've included the parking lines were included in the amount of paint yeah. and, and I'm 
at this time during this project of the new asphalt trying to incorporate a better product which I think will be far more cost effective and if it needs to be applied when the pavement is hot then that's the time to right. do it and Somebody, if we spend two hundred twenty three dollars right. per side per crosswalk in a box that's pre-made we don't have to buy this special tool and I don't see if it lasts five years and we say wow this is great we spent 223 bucks we got five years and then if we need to put a better paint on a better surface after that then we look at that See, I don't that, know how it works. That sheeting is a new product yeah. as of last year I don't know anything about it. Where's that quote of $223 come from? Uh, Franklin Paint that's where we buy all okay. our paint. Is that a 3M application? No. Nope. I can forward it's, to that. It's, it's the whole paint. thing is here. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is off of Atkinson Street. The paint it, it, it's failing everywhere. Yeah. It was failing within a year. If you really if you walk up and down and look at the Route 5 project Mm -hmm. It's not just Rockingham. It's happening in Springfield. It's happening in Chester. I've talked to Graham. So, yeah, I mean, it's just peeling up. It's peeling yeah. up. Yeah. It started peeling uh, after the project surely was com completed. We ran through and that fall to sweep leaves, and the sweeper actually started peeling it up. It's it's. They told me several years. We're not gonna. We're not even gonna get three years out of it. Do they even give any type of warranty with that? No. No. That's the thermoplastic? That's the 3M tape. This thermoplastic sheeting is a new product. I know absolutely nothing about it. And that's right, it's just, it's simple. I mean... You could ask where they've, where they've, was where they've tried it, yeah. He, he's willing to come and do a demo. He just, Let's see where it's, where it's given a year. Let's see yeah. it's a place where it's gone through a year. Yeah, because this tape... Which? I'm sure this I tape... I could ask the guy, where, where's it go, where did they put some on last year? The well, thermal look right. Yeah, yeah I can find that out. Yeah. Thermal? It's a thermal thermo. plastic, yeah, sheeting. You heat the pavement with like a It's weed. 90 mil, so they paint those things yeah. 15 mil, this stuff. Yeah, is. well, it's a lot thicker. It has to be, that, that's gonna be pretty close to 50 mil there. Yeah, yeah, probably. This is 90, yeah. and it's 223 bucks yeah. for enough to do a whole crosswalk. It's thicker, in my opinion, it's gonna catch a blade more and scrape up. Mike, this is supposed you put to, it in the this asphalt. Is, yeah. Well, no, this, you heat the asphalt with a torch, you lay the sheets down, you heat the sheets till they turn a specific color, that's the temperature that it's telling you to stop, yep. and it's supposed to permeate itself into the pavement. That's what it's designed to do. No what, other, but we haven't seen that it's I haven't successful. Seen it. What was the type that was used at the intersection of School and Atkinson? Tape. It was tape. Yep. Can that be done between pavings? What do you mean? Can that be put down? No. That's designed to be put in as you're putting down new pavement. And that's yeah. what they tried to do. Mm -hmm. I just, in my opinion, the, the tape guys were at what is that letter? where you stand, mm -hmm. and did the you? rollers were at Cumberland Farms. Did they see this letter? Yeah. I didn't yeah, they did not coordinate well. Right, right. And, it, and it, it's no machinery. It's a couple guys with some homemade dollies reeling the tape out, the guy going behind with the roller, then waiting for the back roller to come back and roll it in. But I just think the pavement was too cold and it didn't. Yeah, it could be a certain temperature. We uh, we demoed, did a crosswalk right here in front of the square years ago. It was free to us. Here again, it was it was a fairly new pavement. That. It wasn't new, new. Yeah. We had paved it within a couple of years. They came in, we put it down. That winter, we peeled up every bar during the first snow removal. I just think the snow removal pro uh, process downtown for the tape is too aggressive, and I think it'd be a waste of our money. Now, I'm not opposed to trying this sheeting, but I really don't know much about it. So we can find out where it is. Yeah, and go look at it. Go have a look. Talk to somebody, see how when it was put down. Yeah. I mean, it should be a, a similar climate. You know, we we've had really good luck with the paint. I just I don't know. I honestly don't know what happened this year. We paint them twice a year. Salt and sand does that take? Well, that's part of it. Toll. Yeah. Could it be too that we've just gone that far between pavings that at the yeah, end yeah, of that's that span? Yeah, the pavements just age and they yeah the, the whole mm -hmm. you know contracts and expands and moves and gets scraped off. Yeah, this, this 3M on Acton Street, it began failing the first winter. There's a picture there that was a paint over the spring of that first year. Right down where you stand here again. Look at this highlight, I don't see it. Another picture out there floating around? No. Nope. 
There was another one. Oh, there's one underneath there. Okay, so this one, this was after the first year. What is the, the, the whitest part is tape. Uh, okay. And we came back over it that spring after yep. the first winter and we painted over it. So that's why it looks like it does. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, we're just talking about these crosswalks here. Yep, 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 right? yep. We've got some numbers for a new product, which we'll investigate who's used it and how it's holding up. Yep. It's a fraction of the cost. Fraction of the, what is? So to having three men right. paint them twice a year. If it, if it lasts, right. Can we get, cause We don't know how much it costs three, three men right. to paint twice a year. They're, they're out well, there for several yeah. days doing that. Right. Yeah, it's about a 68 hour. We would 68 hour weeks. process 60, 80, yeah. so but say it's 80 weeks. that's two weeks someone's two weeks yeah. three people's two weeks out two guys paint one guy watching traffic yeah. so you can as opposed to 223 so we have a, we have a, a general idea so that's yeah in theory it's, it's okay. but it has to work which was what we'll investigate yeah, I have a hard time believing anything's in the last five years but I like looking if it at lasted other communities and six what months, I think it would be more cost effective than like six, yeah, this, sixty to eighty hours. Yeah. These, this but, isn't this yeah. is a typical downstreet of these crosswalks. I mean, I know you people know this. That you've seen it before. This is this is probably the worst year yeah. that they've disappeared. Mm -hmm. Now, this new product that the, can only go down when it's new pavement. Am I no 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 go no. down no. anytime okay. anytime anywhere yeah. And it can be yeah. done with. Uh, the typical torch work, you don't need the thermalating right, machine. Right, right. Yeah, Are the go. other crosswalks on the newer pavement holding up, like, better than this that we're trying to pay, yeah, paint on that? Yeah, other than the wheel tracks, yeah. Yeah, they're fading, but not as bad as this end. Joe? And I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Joe. You can buy enough of this stuff if you want and paint the rest. Compare three years, yeah, two years, three years. Yeah. I mean, well, I think I mean, we got enough time in the spring. Experiment. Franklin's willing to donate enough material. I mean, it's, we can put it on a crosswalk somewhere and yeah. just see it. Now, I don't know how durable it's, it's going to tell us, but yeah, I think probably the options is to go find a community where it's been used and have a look, yeah. and then also, I mean, because we want to, if we're going to do it, we want to do it when they're paving yeah. and doing the downtown. Well, that's if you want to use the tape, right? Right. But this sheeting. Okay. The sheeting, yeah. yeah. Can be the done anytime. Oh, the sheeting can be done anytime. I think the cost comparison. Okay. Sheeting with a torch, and you can redo it yeah. with a torch. It's different than the tape that has to be done. Okay. This mm -hmm. stuff is fairly new, and you. Right. It, yeah, it was due to be last year. I don't. Yeah. I think so we did. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah. All right. Would B Trans have that information? Simply a phone call. <clears throat> you would still need. The company was. Three men. The company probably. was trying to sell it to us. Yeah. Right Two guys yeah. in traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it takes a couple guys to lay it out while one guy's watching traffic. But uh, v trans uses a lot of uses the uses the water-based paint, the Pikes Fast Premium, same stuff we do. Yeah. I buy it from Franklin because we get state bid, so that's why that's how we ended up getting it. No, v trans would have that information. Which they might, yeah, yeah. That might might be easier. It wasn't v trans was. decision to take Route Five? That mm -hmm. was up to the town. In all the towns, it was sold to the towns that boy, this is a real great product that's going to last. Well, like right. I said, it's. Every, it's probably great south of us, but for New England, it doesn't work. I just I don't. It's not a good application. What was the fifty thousand dollar estimate I saw of the tape? What was that? Was that just downtown area, or was that? That was no. That was everything. based upon ten thousand seven hundred square feet. What we paint each right. Year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I did just forward Mike's email to everybody. Yeah. yeah I was sorry about that. No. Nope. I mean that's a huge chunk of change right there, and if it's. We have a cost comparison of what to cost you for the, the yeah. paint stuff. Here again, I think the tape probably is a great product if you're in Florida, but yeah. not in New England. Well, it sounds right. like the tape is not the option, but if this uh, is the. I'm, I've yeah. never been interested okay. in the tape. All right, so this is oh, this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll this we'll is do the some other. research, find out more about it. That's okay. That's what you yeah. No, I like this this yeah, yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually I'm interested in that cheating myself. Right. So yeah, he why was don't supposed we... to come in the fall and do a demo with one. He never made it. Winter got here before he did, so it didn't happen. Yeah. There's some other. Uh, they got a similar product that for the high manholes. You can build it up with it to have 
the same thing. It's a, a ring you sit over and you heat it up and it draws into the pavement. You just keep building it up until the manhole is not high anymore. Uh -huh. Saves you ripping up the street. Are you planning on staying the rest of the meeting or? I can, yeah. Oh, I, I don't no, want to have you here any longer. You, no. Would you can, uh, I can. Can I ask a question that's not related to this? I think so. Well, we have, I mean, we instead of keeping him here. <laughs> well, I noticed at periodic moments, well, going to and from work out front of the fire station, there's either been a cone there or a yeah. traffic barrel. Yeah. Is there a problem with the drain? Yeah, that structure is collapsing. It is. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Can you get it fixed the other day? No, we just took the uh, casting off and put a plate on it. Oh, okay. it. I don't want to open it there's up. There's two different kinds of application, and one is a twenty-six thousand dollar cart. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know what that had to be bad when they did the project, and it was overlooked. That's only a good thing. <laughs> I'm just curious because I know that some of that is like you say, some of the manholes there right over it where a tire would hit anyway. Yep. You know, so that sure one's one of them. Great idea. Yeah, that one's right. one of them. Well, just by, well, with Mike here, just want to mention we, we had the pre bid meeting for the uh, downtown paving today, mm -hmm. and that went pretty well. We are looking to change the way that we're going to put it out to bid uh, to try to get a lump, instead of a uh, per unit cost per ton, it was strongly recommended by VTRANS as well as some of the uh, contractors. That we we get a better uh, a better uh, situation if uh, we bid it out uh, uh, lump sum. So we'll need to specify the amount of uh, tonnage and you know that sort of thing. That's so that was the recommendation which and which we'll accept. We have the consensus that we would try to go all the way out to the tomb. It's bit which bid out in uh, in there's sections one through six which is out basically out here up to the church yeah. church street. And then uh, item seven. Um, yeah. One through seven pricing is for if they go up about 1,600 feet, yeah. something like yeah. that. Okay. So yeah, it's it's okay. it's an old bit alternate. You want to mention the time of day that we would like to do? Yes. Yeah, so also, we were talking uh, about whether or not we could do nighttime work, in that it would save us. It would it would while it would be a uh, a bummer, for lack of a better word, for some residents who would live in the, in this in the downtown area. It would be much better for uh, area yeah. uh, retailers, safety-wise, yeah, across the board. It would be, it would be, it, it would save us some money. Believe it Is or not. Is the price different? Yeah, that's what we're told. Yeah. See, I, I steered away from it before. No, maybe Bucky can add to it, but because he did it at night before. But I steered away from it before because they said the cost was much higher when we yeah. found out today that it really it's not because they can move that much faster mm -hmm. and get the project done sooner. And they coordinate that with the plant stand open yeah. for them hours. Super. Well, we could also bid that out as, as an alternative. See what, see what the pricing is. You know, with and without night uh, availability of nighttime work. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good idea. I mean, no matter what, we're gonna pick, right. we're gonna tick off somebody. That's right. Well, that's that's kind of the people that live down here. You know what? Following the project, project, I'm sure I'll sleep better. Saving. Well, yeah. No, Getting it done faster. That's the other. Sure. Thing. Yeah. And saving some money. How Same much way. faster though compared? I, I, I don't know. And also the feeling was you get a much better product since you're not dealing with seams all over the place. It's just yeah, there's uh, no stop much more uniformity. Enough. There's less cold joints, so you can stack pavement and keep on going, you know, yeah. and less likely to fail. Because this is, I hate to say it, but this is, how old is this bucky? Three years old up here? And it was paved late in the year, and it, the, right. the, the cold joints are already pulling apart. I've had to yeah. crack fill them already. So now I'm going to have to crack fill them again this year. Right. So it was cold, though. That uh, was so we'll we'll put it out to bid with <coughs> that as bid alternate. Was there one other thing you wanted to talk about? I, can't I think that those were the two big ones. Yeah, those are the two big ones. But that just happened today. You know, the next thing we're going to have to figure out is uh, is uh, we'll put out to bid the um, sidewalk work and then also the uh, uh, the pavement markings. Yeah. I will say there was a lot of interest. There was a lot of people showed up. Good. Yeah. Big turnout. Good. What you said put out to bid the pavement markings? No, we'll to arrange for the pavement markings. Some we could probably do on our own, but it may be that we'll need to figure that out. Probably have to get some crew in here to do it. To, to get it done right. But we're going to investigate the yeah. crosswalk. Yeah. Um, and also while we have you here, I know it's warm tomorrow, and I know, I mean, mm. are you doing any pothole fixing, even yeah, though it's we, not going to last that long? But Deb earlier. And she said spat on the streets there. But yeah. Yeah, we patched, we put out every bit we had today. Every bit was probably uh, two, or three ton, two or three tons. Wow. Yeah, and I ran out. So 
everybody's got potholes, lanes out of coal patch, so we got to go to Pikes up in West Lebanon to get a load. We were in Mount Pelier, and people were testifying before you know, the V-Trans, I mean, before the Transportation Committee, and almost everyone talked about how bad their potholes yeah, were. This everywhere. Year, it's it's bad just some, some were like Brattleboro, yeah. just like really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, you patch one lane, you're coming down the other lane, you turn around, the other that lane's already pounded out, but you just yeah. threw in it. It's, yeah. it, 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 it's, a, it's a big it's waste, tough. but you got to do something. Yeah. If you know about it, you got to make some effort to do it. We doing any diligence coming uh, with the, the predicted warm temperatures and rainfall? Are we? Days, yeah, you know? we? Yeah, we're Yeah, we just making mm -hmm. sure the drains are open, culverts are open. Uh, Mikey work, ran around with the grader today and cleaned out all the major uh, runoffs. So, yeah, yeah, as much as we can do. Yeah. yeah. It's not predicted to flood in this area, though. No, more no we've, I've got absolutely nothing from emergency management. Yeah. I talked to Ron about it today. We met briefly, and he received nothing either. He ran and checked the rivers, and they, have, they haven't even uh, started to move. So We talked to the town manager of Johnson, and they're expecting a lot of damage up there. Are they? Yeah. They have a lot more snow. Yeah. But well, they're talking about the river. Ultimately, it's going to end up down here. It's river. Yeah. Yeah. Rivers. But, um, yeah. We lost the ice on a lot of our rivers. Yeah, we did. And that's another thing. A lot of the, most of the ice is gone. Yeah. We talked also today about whether or not we, if it was warm enough tomorrow, if we could t do do some crosswalk work. But the ground's probably you need it's too the ground. It's got to be really clean. I'll tell you, it's got to be really clean of salt and sand. Right. It has the temperature <coughs> recommended is 50 degrees. Pavement temperature 50 degrees and rising. Not the air temperature, the pavement right. temperature. Yeah, yeah it won't it's be cold. So. Yeah, it's it not going to happen. It's going to be 70. Okay. Is the okay. is the yeah, speed limit thing up? 68. The sun down not working. Right. Coming into town? Yeah, up by the two. Yeah, the night of the oh, was that? the storm before last tree came down, took out all the wires. Oh. Larry Hennessy's going to take care of okay. it. So I'll take care of it. Well, we also did get uh, from VTrans um, uh, a 30 page document on re signing of, uh, to implement the 24,000 pound thing. And we're, um, which, we're going through that now. Yeah, uh, which also I just I got a note that um, Coda and Coda would like to yeah. talk to us. And she talked to me at the ICU yeah. to, to, to address you or somebody. Yeah, so I mean, it would be good to have, um, I know we had BDL and uh, now we have Bucky too. So um, that's Spend why Bucky's waiting around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And then also uh, some photographs were sent to Stefan and myself today from um, Mr. Gay at BDR. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Since you're here, Buck, you want to? Yeah, I don't know a lot about the, what you're trying to do with traffic and the trucks and whatnot. So I was looking for a little bit of information. I guess. If it is it tractor trailers, are you setting a weight limit? What are you? Do you have twenty four thousand pound weight limit from uh, Red Light Hill all the way to um, uh, Archbridge? But but it's not open including to not local including local deliveries. local deliveries or people who are going to Coda and Coda for for petrol. Or well, they can get yeah, local per they can get over weight <laughs> permits from the town. It's not called petrol here. Done. What's it called? Right. Well, they would have to go to those places. Right. They would have to get a permit from the from the town, from the select board. Yeah. They, or, uh, it's, for it's, what? It's the it's annual permit. Local it's not through, it's, well, it's, it's the board's decision, but it, it's... Well, so it's not through traffic, it's local traffic? It's, we're trying, to, the trying board to is trying to eliminate through, through traffic, traffic of overweight vehicles. Oh, Someone needs to deliver. We got a delivery every week to J and H. They got a, a very large vehicle. I don't know if it's overweight or not. It's oversized, but it's um, you know we're not trying to. The board's not trying to prevent anything like that. It's the the BDR or other firms, you know, large vehicles using the uh, the down, uh, you know, Westminster and Rockingham streets. And so the how is the truck coming across the bridge from New Hampshire into Vermont that needs to go south safely do that? You'll, they'll turn right. Turn and uh, turn left at Cumbies. So you understand that a trailer is going to be right out into the main traffic. That's we received some photographs today from BDR indicating that it has been something we've talked about some, um, but yeah, it's a it's a challenge. And if you come north on Atkinson Street, you will have to go into the opposite lane to make that right hand turn by Cumberland Farms. So there's no safety concerns with that stuff at all? Is that, I mean, is there any traffic studies or anything? Or are you just kind of, you know? Uh, it's, it's certainly not my, my, it's a board decision, not a manager's decision. So I think you should, you know, post some of your questions to the board. But. We haven't asked for a traffic study. We had a BDR who came in with the same 
um, concerns. Um, do you I mean, a lot of, a lot of it were, I mean, we are, the problem is that Brit anyone is going to New Hampshire. Yeah. But yeah. we're also concerned about the people who are not going to New Hampshire. They're just coming through town and going straight up yeah, no, I 103. Yeah. There's no reason for a truck. Yeah, yeah. but they do South. that because it's yeah. GPS and they do it. So, I mean, part of it is, that's, even if we can eliminate that, I mean, that's, I think we'll eliminate quite a bit of traffic. I mean, these logging trucks that are going straight through and so forth. So, so for me, for instance, if I need to go to my shop at 121, I have to go that. I can't also have a hard time making the corner down Atkinson Street turning up Red Light Hill without going to the other lanes of traffic. Mm. <clears throat> it's very difficult. So maybe the traffic study would show that, show how difficult it is and this won't happen. Yeah. Or so. anybody would like to go for a ride. Yeah. My, speaking for myself, I think, and I know there are other considerations, but from my perspective, probably the greatest consideration for vehicles of that length and weight is speed. Yep. Um, again, it's not good for a passenger car driver to speed through our town, but the math gets crazy when you're talking about an 18-wheeler going five, eight, ten miles over the speed limit through these narrow little streets. I, and although it's not my exact area of expertise, I think that has a lot to do with the impact and wear and damage on our streets when you have vehicles of that weight going at an excessive speed. My area is more safety and but that's it's, my... But a speed issue isn't a weight issue, right? You got that one. My concern was the infrastructure. Well, actually, if I, could, if I could address that, it is a weight issue because when you're speeding in that big a vehicle, it takes that much longer to stop. But it's not a weight issue. My concern was the 99,000 pound trucks that the DMV guy was, uh -oh, was weighing that are coming through that don't have to come through here, log trucks. Overloaded 99,000 pound log trucks that are not delivering logs or fueling And watching them um, destroy the infrastructure, knocking bricks off of buildings all the way down through here. And we're about to spend a lot of money to, to redo this area. That's the concern that folks are having with the size, with the weight of the vehicles that are coming through here. Yeah. So I'm sure like the logging trucks you're speaking about, uh, I'm just guessing they're probably coming from somewhere off of 121 straight now because again, it's hard to make corner on down mm. Street you can make it easier coming down the hill heading north. Yeah, there is, I mean, it almost so does traffic study. What's, study. what's it's, the it's fine needed. penalty? Right. How do you enforce it? Where are they coming from? I'd Saxton's say, River? Say, yeah, most likely. And a, what? Lot, a lot of truck trailers are probably Canadians or something. Uh, they go to a specific site, they're probably getting loaded and then headed back to the interstate. Yeah. They're not, they're not just jumping off the for that. So if so, things were different and the word got out, could, could a truck that needed to go to Saxon's River take exit 5 or exit 6 and avoid this whole village of Bellows Falls? Could a truck that was leaving, but say, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not dispatched for these trucks. My concern was for the weight of these vehicles that were coming through here. Yeah, if you need to get Saxon River out of Rockingham, per se, you can do, like, Pleasant Valley Road, possibly. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it'd be difficult, too. <laughs> Joe? I, mean, I guess something that should be added to discussion. What's it going to cost? I mean, you're looking to pay Westminster Street this year. What's the price? We don't know. We're going to have to bid. We're going to have to bid that. If it, 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 you know, it's not just truck trailers. I mean, an empty 18-wheeler isn't as much of an impact as driving slow as a fully loaded 10-wheeler full of gravel. Per axle, you've got true. a lot more weight. That's true. That's true. And, uh, you know, we got these projects, and guys are trucking mm -hmm. 10, 10 trips, two trucks, three trucks, two projects somewhere, and they're hauling gravel all day long. Every day, it starts to wear and tear. It starts to cost. And we got to fix that road as, as a town, whereas Route 5 is a U.S. highway, the state takes care of it. So that was, that was why I came but, to the meeting. So we also do have, we do have issues with, all of these turns onto Route but 5 and onto the bridge at, too. Try and do something to make it safe. I don't know what they're going to do, but it's a problem. 
To backtrack to what you were asking about enforcement and violations, that actually flips over, correct me if I'm wrong, into a village matter. Matter. So it's kind of a... So how are you going to know what a truck weighs? They you, can you, be you could get an idea and they can hold them for an hour, a village police officer, but I mean, again, it's going to come down to enforcement. So well, all we've done is um, initiated some signage and trying to avoid 99,000 pound vehicles. So what are the signs going to read? 24th? Barreling through. I didn't make signs, but... Um, no okay. through traffic? This way was out of us? Um, well, no through traffic is not enforceable. You have to okay. do it by the weight. All right. And so we're having, you know, notice uh, legal load limit 24,000 pounds. We're actually having, uh, as you drive, before you even get to the, um, the, the restricted area, there's going to be notifications ahead of time that say, bear with me a second. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, downtown Bellows Falls legal load limit twenty four thousand pounds, seven hundred feet ahead. That's what. So it gives fair warning before you get to an intersection. Like, um, you know, before you get to uh, the area where you can safely turn along. You know. What about GPS? That you would, you'd have to yeah. would have you, to put in with requests for the yeah, various GPS. Google GPSs Maps too. is not too hard to make yeah. changes, but uh, the other ones. The Garmin and the others would be harder. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's been an issue. We've been discussing this now what a year. <laughs> so it's been something that you know we hear you, I mean, we understand that it's. I mean, but, it, but a lot of it is to discourage those people who have no reason no, I, I whatsoever to be here. Yeah, so. I mean, we've had, we've had two 18-wheelers crossing right there that one day. Well, there was, uh, I think they might have been doing sprinkler work there, and it, it back. They, neither one of them were doing business in this district. It blocked traffic and for several hours, right? <coughs> like, didn't say it really. So... Yeah. I know. I've heard a lot of people unhappy with it, and I've heard a lot of people that are happy with it. So yeah. it's, it's, it, I don't know, I'm trying to do my job, and I watch what it does to the roads, I guess. We talk about spending all this money on the roads. So it led me to the discussion. A lot of people mentioned the right hand turn on 121. I don't have, I don't, I don't know what the, what the answer is. Well, we have to bear in mind, I think, that. I, once again, I'm always saying that this is a narrow little village. We have no room left over and uh, basically no place left to go. So well, it's hard to get one 18-wheeler through there if cars are parked on both sides of the road. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. two of them showed up, and the one guy couldn't back up. Yeah. And now what do you do? Yeah, we had to back him out. Mm. Yeah, bottlenecks right in front of All right. Well, it sounds like, I mean, the Code and Code always also <coughs> has some concerns about this. Do we want to... Put on the agenda a meeting and, and hear concerns. So at this point, you don't you don't know how you're gonna um, what a citation would be or how you're gonna figure out what the truck weighs or anything like that. You know? That's well, village. I think right now the village only has one. And correct me if I'm wrong, but last I knew one certified commercial enforcement officer the chief, the chief. that was trained. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's so and it's civil. About Ten years right? ago we had two. Should be a civil, not a not a I think it's DOT. A I, I think what's on our wish list is that we see a situation in the near future where they don't have to be out doing a lot of catch and release violations every day, but once the word gets out, once a couple of, you know, once some long paper is written, the word gets out and, and the situation starts to correct itself from the other side. And there is the, the permit process. The People have not been doing, some companies have not been doing. I don't know how many. We, we just about all of them. Most of them have not been applying for the permit. Uh, we have a long list. Yeah, there yeah. is quite a few actually. So there is? Yeah, we send it out every year. Um, this one we need to be more cautious this year. Mm -hmm. And probably we should uh, have the board, you know, is it March? 
Yeah, they come in throughout the year, but they begin in March. Yeah, we've just started getting phone calls about them, and I've, I've, I've yeah, held them at bay a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a restriction we can put on there. Right now, I just I restrict up to the whatever it's eighty eight thousand and no covered bridges. And there are no permits available for covered bridges. Eighty eight thousand. That's the only restriction. Yeah, that's all the town I can permit up to. Then, then, but then the state goes and gives them a ninety nine or one hundred ten thousand. So. Right. And all based on axles. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. What's that? Based on axles. Axle. Right. 99,000 is the max you can run on any road? Well, they let them run 110. On the highway? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And log trucks are all 99,000. Mm -hmm. But this yeah. road's 88? Oh, it's 24,000. Okay. Oh, right now it's 88. Yeah. Well, they they that the That's the answer I got six months ago was that it was 24,000. Yeah. But then the 99,000 log truck came. Yeah. Our pockets just aren't that deep. Okay. I know, and when the regional may have some data. Yeah, that's true. Because I was with Ron, he called them to set up something. I'm not yep. sure what it exactly was. And I'll tell you that uh, DMV will not, they're not going to come here. I know you probably already heard it, but I spoke to them directly. And it was uh, whatever he is, the commander of DMV says, Mike, unless there's an accident involving a commercial vehicle, we can't come down and do routine enforcement. Mm -hmm. And that all hinges from logging operation on Grizzle Drive last year, where the, the residents were claimed by the log trucks going up and down the hills. Well, we did talk, I mean, at the Violet's Bridge thing about a, a traffic study, but we're more thinking of traffic study of what's coming across, how much is coming across yeah. this bridge here. And, but, and we did that. I did yeah. that. I mean, that we did that before we implemented the three-way stop. Right. At that point. But, I mean, it might be good to... I mean, if we can get support from Wyndham Regional, because they do support that type of studies, correct? Mm -hmm. and um, we'll to get a count. traffic study that also includes just what yeah. what traffic is coming in and out. In, in my experience, when you change anything like that, speed limit, I'm sure, or weight class, that it's, and I don't know why Marcos didn't bring it up to us, but it's almost a requirement that you have a traffic study done, engineer study prior to. Right. That's for speed. Yeah, it's, well, we did it for the stop, too. We, yeah, it was for speed for the downtown that time, but we did it for the three-way stop also. So we should look into, yes, having a traffic study? Well, I, I think, think so, we have yeah. to have one. Yeah. yeah. And that way, at least we're coming to people with... Got all your bases covered. We have our bases covered and, and yep. some real information. Well, there was a traffic study, a downtown traffic study done a bunch of years ago, a dozen years ago, mm -hmm. when I was around last time. But that and was before the Valley Bridge was closed. Right, but, I, but there are some standardized numbers or methodologies in that report that can be replicated by Wyndham Regional, I imagine. You probably and have a copy. Upstairs, I have a copy. Yeah, I know I have a copy. And I know Ron just here a couple months ago called him about doing another one. Yeah. I don't right. know what it entailed, but. Yeah. Who pays for that? that? Is that something we have to pay for to have done? And there is no, I mean, we really don't have an ability like Chester did to make some cuts, I mean, without taking rights away, private, Not really. I mean, purchasing up property from exactly. people, correct? Do you remember that Route 103 corridor study they did maybe about 10 years ago? We met at CRT. It was between Rockingham and Chester. They talked about all the, the traffic flow. I, I still have the information. Yeah, there might be something That's in that, too. For Okay, so I guess that's it for now. But thanks for coming in, Buffy. Thank you, Mike. Get that info. Get it to you, Shane. Just pass it on. All right. But anyway, the uh, trans did put together a real nice sign package, and uh, we're going to tally, tally up what they're recommending. Actually, adding a couple here, pulling in a few, and we'll we'll price it out and see what it comes to. Okay. All right, moving on. Thanks, Mike. Yep, see you later. Feel better. Right. Select what items, <clears throat> review town meeting morning articles and assignments. Anybody have any big issues with what they've been assigned?
and most of these are pretty standard. But I always wonder though, the one that you're assigned, should you be prepared uh, to defend? I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about it, you know. I think that would be good. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than you know the uh, like the social service agencies, um, I think they should they should be, they should be there to de defend mm -hmm. um, to themselves. Yeah, be here. Um, but these new items that we're putting on there, the reserve funds, mm -hmm. I think we should each individually be prepared to defend or answer questions about and so on and so forth. Yes? Is the seventh grant going to be a, mo uh, a motion or is that folded into the budget? It's in the budget at this point. We decided at this point to leave it in the budget. Um, They'll but be there. They will be there. And that uh, we've kind of, now that we have a new development director in place, that this is kind of a prove it year for them coming up. You get a report, do they come and talk to you? About they're going to come and talk, talk to us to at the meeting. Or you just put it in the budget every year? Do you know what they're doing with the money? They uh, came to us before that. Yeah. And they, they gave year. a report. Uh, every year. I mean, it's, yeah. so it's 15K every year for what, now? Eight? Ten years? I mean, you're talking 150 grand. Mm, what have we got? It's been like five years. Five, five years. years? Yeah, it hasn't been that long. Yes, it's been Dutch for the first year, but last year. Well, seventy-five thousand. I mean, what do we get for seventy-five thousand? They're going to explain that again to Bring us. The, on last I heard, they were devising a plan in order to put together a plan. This is that's exactly what they're talking about. You know, one year they brought a strategy to to compile a plan. Which is what they're talking about. One year they brought a brochure and it listed all the towns. And I said, "Well, what about Rockingham?" Yeah. Yeah. And they, you know, what they said, "Yeah. Well, you have to have a project." project. So it's yeah. up to us as well. I think it the is. burden is I mean, on us. So, but then, if we're not getting anybody in town interested in participating, then why are we participating at all? If we're spending money for something no one's using. Well, we also didn't have a development director who was. Mm -hmm tasked or who was was following up and, and collaborating with them um, and we also give to Wyndham Regional I mean of course that's diff slightly different but um, we get a lot back from Wyndham Regional for what we give in yeah. um, well, but like so it is but I'm just saying it's we haven't had people engage at the town level engage with SEVIDS in a way for it to benefit us that's why we, we said okay for this year we'll put it in there we'll have them come explain but it's, if we see seen, Gary doesn't find or that it's beneficial relationship to keep going, then we will make another decision next year about it. I mean, in theory, it's supposed to be good for the town, yeah. but we have not seen that. Right. Right. Okay, and then people are comfortable with re replying and I mean, responding to any of these things, if people have questions, whatever you're assigned. I mean, I'm yeah. sure. Okay. No. That's what we've been I said no. sure. <laughs> That's why we're like here sitting library. at this table. <laughs> well, like, for example, Stefan has the Rockingham Meeting House Association, so maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he. I have the library. Yeah. I mean. Oh, wait a minute. Well, the library oh, can also. Oh, wait a minute. The library can also. Yeah. Your uh, wife yeah. is on the board. Yeah, I should not have that one. I don't know. I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't care. I don't have any answers to the questions they're going to ask. Well, no. The library, the library and the social service agencies, I think, they, they, can, defend. they can answer Great. defend themselves. It's the <clears throat> things that we are asked, you know. Like the Rock Hammy. Like our budget. And we can we should be able to explain our budget to the voters. Yeah. yeah. Seems like hot, though. And again, I'll put together a, um, uh, a handout for the meeting that includes uh, highlights of the budget as well as pie charts that we, like we did last year. Um, do we have to do anything else, just review it? Do we have to motion to approve it? I don't think so. Okay. Just we approve. So. Yeah. You already assigned just to, right. to double it up on it. That's okay. Right. Okay. And this will go, has it gone out in the paper yet? Is it in this week's? Must be, right? They're out. They're out? Yeah, and they're all posted on the website. Okay. Okay, appoint town moderator and town lister. So with the passing of Mike Hardy, we are uh, we need to appoint a town moderator pro tem, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. um, and 
we have reached out to Ray Masuko for this year to I'll see if, it's, um, if he was willing, and he agreed. Um, the latest word, I think the school has also reached out to him, yeah. and he's agreed there as well. Okay. So we need a motion to appoint Ray as the chair. Make a motion that we appoint Ray Masuko. Ray. Raymond L. Masuko. Mm -hmm. No, L. 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 Raymond. Raymond. L. Raymond Masuko. What's the L stand? Anyway, it doesn't matter. As the uh, town moderator. Pro temp. Pro tempore. Pro temp. Tempore. Pro tempore. Tempore, I guess. Tempore. Tempore. Okay. Pro temp. <laughs> you know, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then town lister as well. It's another vacancy, even though we will be having an election soon. We do need to fill that. And I don't think it's as necessary. You don't, you don't have it? You don't have to, but um, you can. Yeah. Well, then we have one. And Paul Obahoski, I believe, has put his hat in the ring. Has this been advertised? Yes. Yes, it has. Both have passed. Yeah, the advertisements are... But here. this is only from now until election day. Right. This is not right. beyond election day. So this is just for the next. Madam Chairman, I can make a motion that we appoint Paul Lobahowski as Lister for the town of Rockingham until March 6th. I'll second it. Sixth? I think so. All in yes. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And those two positions are available for write-in candidates, mm -hmm. uh, but you need 30. Um, and if we, they don't get 30 votes, then this will come back to the select board to mm -hmm. appoint for next year. Okay. So if you do want to run, you know and where you stand, right outside of... And Ray said he was fund. not interested in... The, he's not interested. In running for the position. Okay. So he's just to <laughs> fill in this time. Yep. He's, yep. Okay. He could change his mind. He could. People could write in his name. <laughs> <laughs> then he wouldn't have a choice. And now that's an idea. He and then he would choice. resign and would still have to appoint. So. Okay. He might Any be mad about the opera. <laughs> Maybe. Uh. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Review overtime and comp time reports. Winter storm. Any concerns, questions? Mm -hmm. The new finance director getting a lot of comp time or a lot of hours. Is he? Is he still on the job training, so to speak? Or? Well, it's a lot of work. You know, we were both here yesterday, and um, just, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to do. So it's, uh, and it's then the NIMRC is that contract's fin we're finished with the. I think she's going to come back one more day. But yeah, she was here one day last week, and we were thinking <coughs> one day in um, once we got through February, because we wanted to do a, a, a month tie out. And so it, you know, we would tie out the month of February and just have her oversee some of that. So, but yeah, we're done. Okay, anything else on overtime comp time? We don't need to do the task list. Uh, agenda items for next meeting, March 6th, which is just our organizational meeting. So point, do you appoint people then, or is that the meeting? No, that's, well, that's the, elect the chair, the vice chair, <coughs> the clerk. What time is that, though? There's a few, there's a few, there's a few other appointments that need to be made right away, I believe, but not. Where you know. of coal and lumber? <laughs> yeah, I think we decided <laughs> we didn't have to do that. that. Fence viewer. Yeah. You no, know, I actually viewer. had to respond when I was fence viewer to one. Yeah. Involved yeah, then. There, there are a few, I, I can't remember yeah. what they are. So that's, that's that meeting, okay. Do we have to do that by state statute? Point those um, at really some point. They, I don't. Not okay. all of them. Some of them. Some of it. Has I don't changed. think they expire until mm -hmm. their a, a, a position is filled by someone else mm -hmm. or established. As I said, I did have to respond to a fence viewer many years ago when I was that. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think we. I don't think we have fence viewers this time. I think that was one of the ones they decided they didn't yeah, have to do. I think so. And Weyer Coles, I think, was in. Anyway, Cole. we'll know. We'll know on March sixth and. We don't know who will be sitting here. <laughs> so That's true. Uh, review and approve orders, bills, and warrants. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Other business cast. None no, for me. All other business. No. Nope. Nothing. Stephanie. Nothing. Stephanie. One question here. 
And the so. second um, check warrant report number. The do, do we always receive village expenses on this report? Yeah, yeah, they mix we them. Do. They're, they're just coded. But it comes numbers. from the town general fund. Everything's mixed Everything together and just mixed. just gets allocated out. Sometimes you can find an occasional mistake. Yes. So when I'm really bored, I go through them all. Mm. Yes. You can find that. That's probably good. That might be the reason for the report. Is this one from last week? Where they're all jumbled together. Usually it's all town first, and then mm -hmm. they all start with one, and all the fives are village. Yeah, under account, you'll see 110. That's town. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they the reports have come different. They printed the report differently. <coughs> okay. That's the only that reason it's jumbled up. Oh, oh, gotcha. Can we sign it? So, okay. okay. I'm trying to have any other business. The only, oh, actually, I do have some other business, which was um, people have been asking me about fire burning pyramids because of this is a time of year a lot of people want to burn their pile and usually they want to do it on a weekend and so how to contact um, the fire uh, warden when it's a weekend I don't have his phone number right here but you can call him at home people can call him at home look he's in, listed in the phone book yes. As far as I know, it's maybe yeah, he has a cell here. number. He has a cell number. Yeah, but we don't, don't we necessarily want to just broadcast well, out. No, I, I know. Cell I'm numbers. saying he has a cell number. So, so it, would you recommend that people, if they think they're going to be burning on the weekend, call them during the week and say, "Can I have your oh. number in case I'm burning on the weekend?" Would that be the best that's process the, to do it? That's yeah. the smartest move. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they call the the police station. No, it has. They have to talk to him. Yeah, they could call 463 before, and whoever answers is probably the sheriff's on the weekends, and they can refer to him. And have him yeah. People have tried to do that, and it hasn't worked. And it doesn't work? No, it hasn't worked. Um, so I would suggest anyone who is looking to burn as, you know, it's spring is coming in, mm -hmm. call during the week, um, and get a number that you can call for when you want to burn, if you plan on burning on the weekend. Do it before the snow melts. Yes. Rockingham Fire non-emergency number is 352-1291. What? No, Bell's Falls. Bell's Falls. That must be mutual. Oh, Bell, why is it? Oh, that's right. It's in the back of the book. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Bell's Falls, 463-4343, of course. Right. 463-4343? Yep. Okay, so call that number if you and get a way to contact um, It's in the Sean. back of the town report, all right. the numbers. Try but that number will not work when you call on the weekend. So yeah. if you want to burn on a plan to burn on a weekend, call during the weekday and get a number that you can call him directly on Saturday or Sunday or whenever you plan on burning. Okay, that's it. We don't need an executive session. Had one. Move to like adjourn. I am looking for a motion. To motion to adjourn. Second. That was second. a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.